All right, I'm uh, making this video more for myself. This is um, a little update, I guess, on the 07 Mustang. As you can see here, the 4.0, who Chester has just pointed out, is suffered a fatality. The uh, harmonic balancer is actually broken, which caused the timing chain sprocket to break and jump time, uh, bending all the valves and, and breaking a couple, which then destroyed the heads and the pistons in those cylinders. This engine, being the 4.0, is a descendant of the uh, German V6 that used to be a pushrod motor. So some of you may know it was had a cam when it was a pushrod motor. So when they made it, the overhead valve, overhead cam, sorry, overhead cam engine, um, they had a sprocket like a normal uh, pushrod motor that would drive another sprocket, in this case the jack shaft, which ran to the back of the motor and ran the timing chain on this side for this head. Another chain ran up to run this cylinder head, the, the driver's side cylinder head in the front, and then yet another chain to run the um, pump and stuff like that. Anyway, this motor's junk, uh, boat anchor. Um, what happened was uh, I've had this car a number of years. The original OEM uh, harmonic balancer actually separated here where they, I guess it's um, vulcanized rubber, but where they put the pulley onto the balancer. It separated and I replaced it with a part store part, probably uh, made overseas um, at a lower quality. Anyway, as you can see, it it failed. I don't know the root cause. It was just the tension of the belt over time fatigued the the lower quality metal, or if it was a improperly cast or what. But it it failed. Like I said, and <clears throat> interesting enough. This is harmonic balancer. It also is the crank trigger and the pulley. Uh, so there were signs that I didn't figure out. The engine would occasionally have a misfire uh, code or would act uh, funny with a miss, uh, but then it would go away. So I'm guessing this was actually starting to move around long before it actually broke, uh, which would then throw off the crank trigger signal uh, but I I was chasing the problem for a long time started with plugs and wires um, coil packs then went to fuel injectors changed uh, fuel filter uh, mass airflow all kinds of things um, trying to to hunt it down till it ultimately just uh, died on me one day so it's junk so that leads me to this project, this is, uh, never mind the Thunderbird here, that's another project we'll talk about sometime. This is a 2012, it's the 37 V6, obviously uh, it's been wrecked. Uh, so I picked this one up as a donor, uh, and it, one of the main reasons I wanted this one is because it's a six speed. So it's got the MT82 six-speed. Some of you may already know that the... Sorry, it's July and very hot, so my camera's already getting foggy. The uh, 11 and up V6 Mustangs used the larger GT brakes and sway bars and the 8.8 .8 rear end. So... This car is basically a 2010 GT with a V6, and then this engine, it's also an overhead cam, but this engine uh, produced a little over 300 horsepower and was uh, predicted to get over 30 miles to the gallon, so 
it's more horsepower and better fuel economy than the 4.0. This also is the same basic engine uh, that they put the twin turbo EcoBoost on. That was a 3.5, but the same platform, uh, the Cyclone platform, they call it. Uh, so uh, you may someday see some twin turbos from an EcoBoost motor put on this one. They, I do believe they have some forged internals um, and there is a, a person who makes a kit. The exhaust manifolds are different, um, but there's a kit to adapt the EcoBoost uh, turbo exhaust manifolds onto these cylinder heads. Um, so they'd be kind of neat, a 3.7 twin turbo. But all of that's going to go here in Redfire. And Sadly, Redfire has been sitting here about a year. Uh, this is where the 4.0 came out of. It was just a daily driver uh, for a long time for my wife. The kids drove it, uh, but it was just a 4.0 with an auto. And uh, not all that exciting, but it was a, it was a good looking car and handled nice and uh, was low mileage. I think it's still under 100,000, um, and uh, lowered it, put uh, bigger wheels and tires on it, um, true dual exhaust, uh, California Special or GT500 rear bumper, a uh, little chin spoiler, um, have a performance alignment, um, things of that nature. So uh, I hate to just let the car rot away, so I'm going to take the 2012 back there and we're going to basically put everything from it in this car. We'll put the bigger brakes. Uh, this car has uh, the standard uh, hydraulic type power steering versus the EPOS or electric power steering in the 2012. So I'm going to basically change the whole K member. So we'll have the electric power steering which you can adjust the, the feel and sensitivity. Um, so that'll mean, obviously, the whole computer and wiring harness system is all going to have to change in order for the 3.7 to work in this car. Um, and, of course, the instrument cluster, because of the PATS security system, uh, we're going to have to swap the dash. Uh, I do believe that the actual instrument cluster would interchange, uh, even though they look different. I've read where some people have swapped the later cluster into the older dash, but I'm going to swap the whole dash and console. So this car will have the 2012 uh, dash and console. Obviously you need the clutch pedals and shifter. And then of course we'll replace the 7.5 rear end with the 8.8 .8 from the 2012. So that's kind of the project have already started removing some of the damaged parts, but this car runs and drives. Been able to take it out and drive it around. It goes through all the gears. There's no check engine light. Um, motor sounds good. Uh, transmission shifts good. Brakes work good. Uh, other than the obvious body damage, um, the the car mechanically is in pretty good shape. So it's going to make a great donor. It's going to be a lot of work taking all of this wiring and computers and uh, mechanical parts, basically swapping the entire car from this shell to this shell. Um, but I think it's going to be worth it in the end. A lot of people would say, why don't you do a coyote swap? Well, this car I got for $1,300 running and driving. Uh, and it has basically what I want more horsepower, a six speed, the GT level suspension. Uh, so it's going to make Red Fire a fun daily driver. Uh, I've already got a couple hot rods, right? They've got the, the Lightning on the current daily driver. And then, of course, most of you probably know about the Warhorse there with the 502 stroker and a TKO so I've got I've got some hot rods so we don't need uh, red fire to be an all-out hot rod
Um, so anyway, that's uh, that's my plan, and uh, started the plan in motion. Right, got this thing started, uh, assessing uh, what's all needed to be done. Some of the more obvious things are that the air conditioning compressor is on this side in the 12, and it's on this side in the 7. Uh, so even all the air conditioning hard lines are going to have to be swapped. Probably the fuel lines from the tank are going to be different because the fuel rails are obviously different. Um, but fortunately, these are both S197 cars and the, the actual structure of the uh, engine compartment is the same. They actually use the same K member uh, from 5 through 14, I believe. So the, the K member should swap over nice and again giving me the EPOS, bigger brakes, bigger sway bar. Um, so hopefully you can swap that whole thing as a unit and then just be a matter of <clears throat> going through this lovely wiring harness. Cheeto is ready to do it. He's he's like, why aren't we started? He's give me the tools. So I guess that's probably enough of the video for now and we'll look at it some more as we progress. I might even try to make some videos of some of the surgery. In the meantime, thanks for watching.